Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the best 10 brawlers to max out in Brawl Stars right now. So every single season, the meta shifts a lot. But a lot of these changes, you actually won't really be too surprised by. So we're going to be jumping in with probably the best brawler, honestly, to max out this season. It's going to be Charlie still. So even though she got a big nerf with her super projectile speed, I would say that she's one of the most versatile and one of the easiest brawlers to play with this season. Still, she's absolutely insane. If anything, she actually might have got slightly better because her hypercharge rate uh, got buffed from 2.5 supers to 1.66. So that just means she's able to make more plays. Even though her hypercharge isn't that great, she's just able to get that speed boost, damage boost, and run down opponents much quicker. So for me, Charlie's easily one of the best brawlers in the game. And he must max her out. So the next probably must absolutely max out. It is Larry and Laurie. So you're probably sick to death of me just saying that Larry and Laurie are so broken. And they still are. They're still probably the best brawler in the game. They're just absolutely running all over the meta still. Even after, what, seven plus nerfs since they've been released? They're still crazy strong. So if for some whatever reason you haven't got it maxed out, please max them out right now. Because they'll still be good at least for a few more weeks as the meta develops. Of course, you know, as a thrower, they're just so incredibly strong. And then even if you're facing off against aggro brawlers, they can still just be good with Larry's main attack. But Laurie is the main problem now. He's able to chase down people so easily. He, he deals such good damage. And he actually jukes really well as well. So he wastes a lot of opponent's ammo. It's just so many broken things about Larry and Laurie. They're still an absolute S tier brawler. Next up on the must max out list, we have Leon. So you've probably seen with my ranked guy the other day, literally the best picks pretty much in every single scenario is Charlie, Leon, and Larry and Laurie. So again, you can't go wrong with Leon. He did get a small nerf, which I did notice, guys, with his hypercharge rate, but I still feel like that hasn't really impacted him too much because it's Leon at the end of the day. His hypercharge itself, I think his hypercharge is the only, I would say, considered broken one at the moment because you can still shoot whilst you're in this with the additional damage buff as well it's just crazy strong his hypercharge is carrying him at the moment and again the thing about leon is that you can pretty much play him everywhere and the crazy thing about leon as well in ranked he's insane at every single modifier he's just so incredibly strong so leon no matter what game mode whatever map whatever modifier you're playing He's just going to be one of the best picks. So next up on the must max out list, we have Piper. So Piper is back in the meta and she's pretty much an S tier brawler because the map pool has really helped her out. She's a really strong pick pretty much everywhere except for hot zone because the maps are just so open and ranked. All of the modifiers as well in ranked, Piper's just so strong. But of course, this isn't just a ranked list, just in ladder itself, which is just absolutely insane because the busted thing about Piper is that most people are using knockback gadget now. So that means that even assassins can't deal with her, especially if you use the gadget charge gear as well. You have four knockbacks, you pair that with snappy sniping. It means that you're pretty much untouchable. You got your super to get away as well. There's so many cheesy mechanics and people are really starting to hate Piper right now. I still love her, but I can see why she's annoying in this meta. So so for me, she's an absolute must max out. Next up on the must max out list, we have Bell. So you might be wondering, well, Bell's hypercharge is one of the worst in the games right now. But that is true. But the good thing about Bell is, again, if you're playing ranked, she's really strong in that setting. But not only that, she's just going to be pretty good on ladder as well. The hypercharge, she's one of the few snipers or just range brawlers in the game that has a hypercharge. So that in itself is going to leapfrog her. In a lot of situations, even if, I don't know, you're facing off against Nanny or Piper, if you have a hype charge with the additional speed, you're probably able to win that interaction. I won't really say easily, but a lot more in your favor. So purple button really does help you a lot of the time. Also, just from watching a bunch of practices and competitive recently, last weekend, Bettler's just been used so much in comparison to other brawlers. So she's just always a versatile option to have. And again, just literally having a hype charge itself helps her out. So next up on the most max out list, we have Gene. So you might be wondering, well, Gene only got like a 4% damage buff to his gadget and his main attack. But I just think Gene has really catapulted himself back into the top of the meta. You've seen him so much in competitive right now. You've seen him everywhere in ranked. And he's super solid. So that might be because there's a few cheesy strats going on. There's a lot of Gene Buster going on with a lot of different knockout and bounty maps, which is why you know he's coming back into the meta because he's always been pretty good there. And then there's also some really cheesy strategies with Kit and Gene as well. I don't know, there's just so much cheese involved with Gene. And also, again, if you play ranked, he's just really good on all of the modifiers, literally. So depending on what you play, he's gonna be really solid on. Of course, the thing you can't really play him in is Brawl Ball, but still, you can get away with playing Brawl Ball because Goalkeeper's Dream is a map. So, map pool really helps brawlers like Gene. I think he's just getting better and better. The next up on the most max out list, we have Ruffs. So, another brawler that got a decent buff with last set of balance changes. I probably overrated Griffin Otis a little bit and completely forgot about Ruffs. He always makes his way back into competitive whenever he gets any type of small buff. 
because him in itself is just such a good asset to the team so of course you've got just a bounce function which is really good on maps like split for example and you know there's just a lot of maps in the game which you really benefit of breaking open the map as well and of course not only that you're giving your teammates a an increase in damage and increase in hp as well so of course that's really going to help in interactions and especially if you can get a couple of power-ups to your gem carrier and then your other lane as well you're just going to be able to just get that domino effect and never die and of course win the game so of course that just makes roughs really good and the damage buff of course with the nerfs to hype charge as well it's just automatically made roughs a little bit better so i really think he's a top ruler again with his damage buff so for the most max out list we have a nanny so of course if pipe is meta but nanny's going to be meta because the only nerf nanny's received in the past six months is a small hp nerf and of course she got that big damage buff which made her really strong for a couple of metas and then hype charge came in pushed nanny out the way and then nanny's just been able to pop off again with a good uh, amount of maps that are really open so that's why nanny's just a really good to pick right now in ranked but not about hype charge got nerfed and there's just not as many purple buttons spamming going on so nanny's able to do well with that because of course the big counter to nanny in the past was any type of aggression so anyways nanny is just so good because of the pure damage that nanny can put out she can one shot two shot so many different brawlers if you're playing ranked she's good in pretty much every single modifier because of course she deals a lot of damage so she's good on big friend time detonation the map opens up so she's good on that about quick fire she's good on that because she has three projectiles and of course on ladder she's just going to be invincible whether it's bounty and knockout the two best game modes for her and she's still going to be really good on open heist maps like bridge too far for example so uh for me i think nanny is easily one of the best rulers in the game and you must max her out the next up on the must max out list we have meg so this is a bit more of an off meta pick and people really hate me going meg so much in my streams but it works because meg is a brawler that people underestimate a lot but just because of the pure tankiness in that mech form even though you're not getting many kills you're just able to get so much pressure and win so many games so if you know how to play mech correctly you can easily win bounty knockout she's a great counter pick to a lot of those snipers right now and snipers seem to be kind of running all, all over the meta with bell nanny piper so meg is a good direct counter to that you know meg's gonna be of course really good in hot zone really good as a gem carry and gem grab if there's any open maps like goalkeeper goalkeeper's dream and brew ball she's gonna be good there and of course knockout literally so underrated you're able to push your enemies all the way back into spawn and get that spawn trap going especially when the gas closes in so i just love meg she's a free pick most of the time people don't really know how to counteract her especially in competitive play very underrated lastly on the must max out list we have Stu. so i've been putting Stu in this list probably every other month because he's always a top 15 brawler i just can't not put him in this list because when i take a look at the stats he's one of the most played brawlers in competitive but not only that he has one of the best win rates in comparison to some of the other high pick brawlers so he's got like the best stats to back it up main reason being is because he's super versatile he's really hard to counter especially if you're a good stew and you just take a look at the map pool as well he's just solid he's really good in hot zone really good in gem grab really good in real ball not really the best outside of those areas but again a good stew will just completely dominate all it takes is one super and you're able to chain it so easily so for me stew is a must max out also if you're playing ranked he's really good in all the modifiers pretty much you've got big friend he's really good with gas heal quick fire he's really good on spamming those attacks and just overall Stu's always mr consistent and he's always a meta brawler so you can always be safe and presume that your power points and resources are safe maxing him out anyways that's going to be it for today's video guys let me know whether i missed out on any brawlers that you should max out of course most of these are going to be like the best brawlers in the game but a couple of them i'd say are like good counter picks to meta brawlers but yeah that's going to be it hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like uh, comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time